So anyway, we know that job searching might take some weeks, some months, hopefully not that long. But during that time, it's important for job seekers to have clear expectation or let's say uh, not to have that at every job they're going to get it because there will be rejection. And it's not all important to be in front of the computer 24 seven. They need to do variety of things, networking, content creation, or maybe taking a day off because your mental health is so burnt out. So in your expertise, what tips you give to your clients to have that positive mindset constantly when they're applying for a job? Absolutely. Um, I have three. So the first one is very close to what you were just talking about. And that first one is creating a schedule. The second is understanding what's in and out of your control. Mm -hmm. And then the third is getting additional support. So let's go over the first one first, creating a schedule. So like you just talked about, there might be days where you need to take time off. Um, you don't want to be spending 24 hours looking for jobs. You also want to throw in some networking in there too. So I recommend creating a schedule, a specific time that you dedicate to job searching. Um, if needed, you could split that up into this is time that I'm going to look for jobs. This is time I'm going to apply. This is time I'm going to network. And this is time where I'm going to, yes. to work on professional development. That's like what an ideal schedule would look yeah. like. But everybody's schedule is different, of course. So, um, you know, creating that schedule for yourself and what's going to work for you and whether you're currently working or unemployed, how much time you have, if you've got kids, if you're in school, mm -hmm. so many different elements. But creating some type of schedule, some type of consistency and regular and regularness uh, is, is the first tip. All right. And then the next is understanding what's in and out of your control. And I created a LinkedIn post about this recently. And... It was something that I learned as a recruiter and I wanted everybody, I wanted the general public to understand once I became a recruiter, I was like, everybody needs to know this, that a lot of the time, a lot of the time, your rejection actually has nothing to do with you at all. Yeah. Like it's, your resume don't take might it personally. be- personally. Don't take it yeah. personally. Yeah. Your resume, your experience all might be really good fits and your rejection doesn't necessarily mean that you weren't a good fit. It could mean something as simple as the timing or the circumstances or our budget or a miscommunication, or we accidentally clicked a link to post it and we didn't actually mean to. There are so many potential reasons why you might get rejected. And so to take every rejection so personally, it's just not fair to yourself. Yeah. And so, um, Understand that there's a lot that's outside of your control in online applications, but what is within your control is kind of that thing I talked about earlier of having a schedule and consistently submitting applications and consistently trying to look um, and provide value to others. That's within your control and that's yeah. what you should be focusing your efforts on. Yeah. Then the third, of course, is getting support. It doesn't have to be formal support from a career coach. It could even be support from another job seeker. Just having somebody beside support you who's going through. Yeah who's going through something similar, it's a great way to kind of relax and realize that this is not all your fault. <laughs> and sometimes it's just, like I mentioned before, it's just circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to getting formal support, like a career coach, one thing I do often say is that growing up in school, we had teachers and we had grades. And then in our jobs, we have bosses, we have trainers, we have regular feedback, hopefully. And then when you get into a job search, you're completely alone. You have no teacher, you have no trainer, you have yes. no feedback, you are by yourself. Mm -hmm. And so having someone like a career coach or like a job search community that you can become a part of, whatever it is, that's ultimately going to help you so much because you should not have to do this alone. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I tell my clients having a schedule, let's say maybe Monday morning at 10 o'clock, make 10 comments to companies that you want to work. In the afternoon, apply. Tuesday morning, go for a walk or go to the gym. In the afternoon, go for an informative uh, session. Wednesday, take the day off or something like that and then continue doing. I think that's consistent. And even sometimes uh, uh, celebrating small wins. I applied, I got an interview, things like that. But do you think that these days, uh, a lot of times companies are ghosting after a conversation happening? Or let's say uh, we also know that Sometimes a job is posted, but we already have someone in mind. So how do you explain that to a job seeker? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so frustrating. I cannot deny that. That's very frustrating. For me as a recruiter, I was also a recruiter in a very different time, in a very different market. But my philosophy was I never ghosted anyone. Mm -hmm. I truly never intentionally ghosted someone. 
Um, because I just, I didn't think that that was fair or right. If you've yeah. put in the time to give me an application, I at least owe you a response. Yeah. But I've also recruited for some larger, or excuse me, not recruited, consulted for some larger companies where their recruitment team is so small that it's just impossible, truly mm -hmm. impossible to get back to everybody and to review every application, especially in a market like we're in now. Yeah. Um, posting a job with somebody in mind, that's also really frustrating too, because then why are you opening it to the public uh, to potentially get someone yeah. better? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, legal purposes, policies. There could be a lot of reasons. Um, and I don't, I don't want to diminish that feeling of frustration because I, I completely understand it. But ultimately, it's kind of one of those things, like I talked about before, that is outside of your control. So let's focus on what is within your control. And that is continuing to move forward. Maybe explore other opportunities at this company if that company is really interesting to you. Mm -hmm. Or send a connection request to somebody, network with them. Yeah. There's so many things that are within your control that you yeah. can keep doing to go forward. Uh, and so focus your energy on those. Thank you for those great tips, Eddie. Thank you very much. So again, for the audience, if you have any other tips, you can leave them below. So tune next time for another question with Eddie.